I think I see it more clearly today than I did then. And secondly, and this is the more important point, I think we were wrong. I think my associates and I acted in accordance with what we thought were the traditions, principles, values of this nation, but we were wrong. And therefore, I think, it, I think we owe it to future generations to explain why, to try to draw the lessons so we won't make the same mistakes again. Yeah. Well, there are two, three, I should say, basic misconceptions. The first was, I think we misjudged the Soviet threat, the communist threat, and this is very important. I hope we'll have time to refer back to that. The second was, we viewed it as a war of aggression, communists against South Vietnam. It, it was a civil war. We didn't understand that. Thirdly, we used military tactics and strategy that were more appropriate to, to opposing the Soviet threat in Western Europe than the guerrillas in Southeast Asia. When President Eisenhower put it forward in 1954, it was widely accepted. In 1961, when President Kennedy came in, it was still widely accepted. When Johnson came in, it was widely accepted. Today, I view it as entirely wrong. I do not believe that the communists, Chinese and Soviets, could have used or would have used South Vietnam as a key to taking over all of Southeast Asia and as a, a trigger for more pressure on Western Europe. I think we were wrong in thinking that then, but that is what we believed then. You have to understand, and it's hard to understand this today, that President Kennedy, Dean Rusk, I, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, Max, had all fought, fought in World War II. Churchill said, the late response of the West to Hitler cost millions of lives in World War II. We were determined there would not be a late response to communist aggression uh, in the 50s and 60s, and we believed that the communists were seeking to take over the world. And let me tell you, there was some evidence of that. In August of 1961, while I was secretary, the Soviets sought to take West Berlin. A year later, in October 62, they put nuclear missiles in Cuba. We came very close to nuclear war. In June of 67, they sought to back Egypt to eliminate Israel. So there were threats, but I think we misjudged them in Southeast Asia. We were wrong. We faced tremendous pressure from the right to expand the war. At one point, Senator Thurmond said publicly, after I testified, this was August of 1967, he said, you are speaking like a communist appeaser. You are putting forward a no-win policy, i.e. unleash all of our power, including uh, nuclear weapons if necessary. So we were, we were fighting to, to try to avoid further advances of communism in the war, at the same time avoiding a larger war. Human beings killed, 160 million other human beings by war in this century. It's the bloodiest century in human history. We don't want that in 1960. We should learn from our experience, including the experience of Vietnam, how to avoid that in 1960. That's in the 21st century. That's the purpose of the book. And that's what I would say to the veterans. Help us understand. Help us understand the mistakes and help us to never make them again. People who have read it, are beginning to understand we can learn. We should learn from the past. That's the foundation of avoiding similar errors in the future.